Okay, so this is going again. Um, another collection, CD collection vault um, update. Um, in the background, I already did a video for this. Um, Ackley's Melano, my album, black metal album of the year. Um, just fantastic. It's playing in the background right now, but um, I, I cannot get enough of this album. Uh, I think it was probably the reason it hasn't shown up on a ton of lists, at least that I've seen, is just because it came out, the physical copy came out so late in the year. Um, but I also have The Dreaming Eye. Um, this one came out, I think, a couple years ago. I'm trying to get the glare off of here. Just the haunting cover alone. It's just a, a nightmare on wax, I think, is what I described it as. But uh, we had a nice storm here in the Midwest yesterday. There's huge power, uh, huge uh, tree limbs and shit down. Thankfully, we still have power. So, um, But today, we're going to go through a section of my CD collection from the vault. Um, as you know by the title, you know the band I'm talking about. If you're not a fan of this band, um, you probably want to skip it. Also, shout out down here to Metal Mikey. He's hanging out. Um, Mom is not home right now. He gets a little pissed off um, and pouts, as you can see just now. Um, he laid his head down. He's not happy. So um, he'll walk away. Then he'll come back, goes to checks to see if she's home. Uh, he doesn't mind the black metal, though. So shout out to Metal Mikey for that. Um, so we're going through my CD collection of Alice in Chains. Um, Alice in Chains were formed in 1987. Um, if you listen to your local dad rock station, or classic rocks, whatever you want to call it, station, um, they still play Alice in Chains nonstop. Uh, I don't know why they don't play some of their newer stuff. It seems like they always go back to... Oh, the, the hits, I'll call them. Um, but Alice in Chains really are... A lot better than many people give them credit for, especially Jerry Cantrell and his songwriting abilities. Uh, he's a great guitar player. Um, Lane Staley was a great vocalist. Um, I know there's a lot of hubbub, you know, around his heroin overdose when he passed away, and then Allison Chains got a new uh, singer. We'll talk about a couple of those albums, but um, I was a big fan of Allison Chains. This far as when the grunge movement started there was something very unique about them and I would say compared to their peers I know Soundgarden and I obviously Nirvana get a lot more credit out of that Seattle grunge scene but I think Alice in Chains the, the longevity um, the songwriting um, and just the, the different dynamics of that band brought to their music I thought was a lot better than others including Soundgarden and and whatnot Nirvana got known um, for blowing up on MTV and you know the smells like teen spirit and all that stuff and then Soundgarden got really popular um, and I don't think Alice in Chains ever really got their due granted they did get popular but not in the same way that Soundgarden Nirvana did and there were some other bands out of that time like Screaming Trees that I thought were really great. And it's true for any scene, right? The the popular shit or the catchier stuff sent, tends to um, be the stuff that gets the most credit. But that wasn't really the case in this instance compared to many others, right? So I'm going to go through my stack of Alice in Chains CDs here and talk briefly uh, about each one. Um, the first one uh, is their debut full length called Facelift. Uh, came out in 1980. So as I mentioned, they started in um, 87. So it wasn't three years after the fact that they were formed or had a, uh, a full length. Uh, the songs on here you all know. Uh, Man in the Box, We Die Young, uh, Bleed the Freak. I remember when Man in the Box came out uh, on MTV. This is a original voice, by the way. Um, there's the inside and the outside. I thought Man in the Box was pretty cool, kind of simple. Um, I Usually when bands have two vocalists, it kind of rubs me the wrong way, but um, Lane Staley had that rough, gruff vocal st uh, style, and Jerry Cantrell is very melodic, and I thought they played well off of each other. They didn't do it on every song. They did it when it made sense for a song like A Man in the Box. You know, when you hear Man in the Box, it sounds very cohesive 
Um, I was able to see Alice in Chains on this tour. Uh, they opened the Clash of the Titans tour, which they were very out of place on. Uh, for those that don't know, I talked about it in the previous video. That was uh, Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Alice in Chains. And they, Alice in Chains opened the show. I think Man in the Box had just gotten on MTV. But they had no business being on this tour. It was good exposure for them, for um, potential fans. But um, you're opening for, for Slayer, let alone Megadeth and Anthrax. Uh, you're going to get a lot of shit. And where I saw them, they were you know, getting booed at times and whatnot. But um, I enjoyed them live. I was glad I was able to see them uh, with Lane Staley. So, yeah, Man in the Box is uh, still a great um, song and this whole album for the most part, it's pretty good. There's a few misses, but still good. Um, soon after that, they released an EP. I remember picking up this EP at the local mall. Um, I was full, full on Alice in Chains. I, uh, this is the SAP EP. I put this in my CD player in my car, and I almost um, rolled down the window and threw it out. Um, as you can imagine, or those of you that don't know, this is an acoustic EP, which I had no fucking clue um, when I bought it. I hated this uh, with a passion. I, I was like, "Is this who the fuck is this band that just put out Man in the Box, Sea of Sorrow, still a great song, um, and then they put out this uh, acoustic shit. Um, I was not um, happy <laughs> with this release. Thankfully, it was an EP and only four songs, but... Um, as I matured in age, um, the song, I think, Got Me Wrong, was starting to be... I think it was used in that shitty movie, Singles, the movie about the grunge movement in Seattle when things were just getting out of hand. Um, and I heard it, and I was like, that song's kind of catchy. Who is it? And they were like, Alice in Chains. And I was like, that's not really Alice in Chains, is it? Um, but according to the credits, Jerry Cantrell wrote all these songs, and if you listen to all these songs today... Um, they stand the test of time. They're, they're all great. Um, as you mature in age, you start to appreciate things for what they are more so than, um, you know, being, you know, cool or, you know, this isn't heavy enough, shit like that. Um, but a lot of the heaviest stuff can be acoustic as well. Um, I thought the back cover was kind of funny. I can't really tell who they're... It's, if you can't tell, it's a group shot of them pissing on some pictures so I don't know if it was them pissing on their own pictures um, and maybe people that they knew like me that would poo poo this EP um, I was not a fan but I I enjoy it very much even to this day and then they released uh, what I would consider their masterpiece an album that I it's a desert island album for me I just haven't got around making the video um, this is dirt um, every song on here is great um, Them Bones is on here, Damn That River. Um, very depressing in a way. I remember my dad, um, I was playing this in the car, and my dad was like, how can you listen to this depressing-ass music? <laughs> um, but sometimes, you know, depression, uh, if you have depression at all, um, real depression, sometimes listening to others that feel the same way as you do um, helps. You know, this had um, Wood, Brewster, Them Bones, as I said, Angry Chair, Still, still a great, great um, song, in my opinion. Um, not much to show on the inside. But songs like, uh, I believe I read the song Down in a Hole, you know, was around. I think Jerry Cantrell was going through uh, a divorce at the time. Here's the inside. And it was kind of like him just, you know, writing a song about it. You know, look at my heart decorated like a grave. I mean, that's, that's pretty heavy lyrics if you think about it. Um, Rooster about, I believe, his uncle or his father was his father's nickname and uh, about the Vietnam War. Um, Wood, about Andrew Wood passing away from a heroin overdose. Ironically enough, they wrote a song about it. Um, and, you know, Lane Staley met the same fate. But Jerry Cantrell, um, for the most part, as I said earlier, wrote, um, or at least co-wrote almost every song, if not every song on this. Um, along with other Alice in Chains stuff, so still still a, a classic rock album in my opinion. You'll hear Wood on the radio and probably Rooster, but if you do a deep dive and do the deep cuts on this, it really is um, 
fantastic. Um, next up is the, I believe the name of the uh, jar of flies. Um, this is the, I don't know if you can see that, this is the CD Plus version uh, for you people that are younger and maybe tuning into this. This is a slipcase. This is the actual um, EP. Um, this was something that you bought and it actually came with, I don't know if you can, you know, be able to see it very well. It came with two discs. Um, this little thing flips open and there's a Corel Drivers um, Enhanced CD. So the way this works, CDs, or not CDs, um, the internet was starting to kind of gain traction. Computers uh, were starting to become very prevalent in homes across America. And you could pop a CD into a CD um, drive and it would either install stuff on your computer or you would have to have the CD in to run it. And you could put this in and I don't remember what's actually, I don't know if it tells, um, all it says is there's graphics, text, and video. I think I remember there being, let's see what the back says here. Um, you're holding your hands the latest breakthrough in multimedia technology. This is how advanced we thought we are back in. When did this come out? I don't remember. 95, maybe? Um, put this disc in a CD player and it will play like a regular compact disc. Put this disc in your computer CD-ROM drive and a new world of interactive musical adventure is yours to enjoy, including graphics, text, and video. All at your fingertips in an instant. How exciting. Um kind of funny now when you think about what you have at your fingertips at an instant. Um, that's the inside. Some lyrics in here. And um, this is also a very uh, acoustic EP, very similar to Sap that I mentioned earlier. I like this one a lot more. Um, Rotten Apple, Nutshell, um, Don't Follow are all great, great songs. But yeah, you could pop this in. Um, I haven't done it in a while because I don't even know if I have a computer that has a CD drive anymore. Um... But you could put it in, you know, screen would pop up, <clears throat> and would have a kind of a menu, like a DVD menu. And you use your mouse to click on it. You could watch videos of the band. Um, I think it has text where you could click and, and read the lyrics of the songs. Um, and also listen to the music. So yeah, this was considered cutting edge uh, technology. This probably cost me $17.99 when I originally purchased it. And that was back when this came out. I, I think I said 95. I don't know if that was actually true or not, but um, yeah, this was this was the cutting edge shit back then. Very kind of funny now that you think about it, but um, I, I kind of hang on to it just because it's kind of cool. You don't see many CD-ROM music CDs anymore, so um, I did have a version of this. I wish I still had it where over here in the spine they actually put plastic flies um, and I don't know what happened to that. That was probably a special edition. It's probably worth a fucking million dollars right now. But, um, yep, yeah, that was that. So after Dirt, um, they released a self-titled album sometimes. Some people call it the Three-Legged Dog album. Uh, but this one came out in 1995. Um, this had, um, Grind, Brush Away, Heaven Beside You was kind of a popular song. And again, um, they started to lose me a little bit with this album. Um, it's not terrible, but there's only like five songs or so. It was a huge um, change um, going from Dirt to this. It actually came out with a, a green cover that I had at one time. I don't know what the hell happened to it. Ended up getting the, the black and white version, which is fine. Um, but I don't know if I'll hang on to this or not. It's not my uh, favorite you know, the three-legged dog on the front and then the three-legged man on the back. On the inside, there's really not much to show you there. It did have the green or yellow fluorescent CD. Not my favorite Alice in Chains. Um, next up, we have... Um, this came out in... Oh, I don't remember what year this came out. It was after um, the self-titled one came out. Um, but this is MTV Unplugged. Um, this is, uh, for those of you that didn't have MTV back in the day, they would do an Unplugged series where they would have bands come on and do uh, acoustic versions of their songs, which worked well for um, rock bands. It kind of made sense. Um, and this is a, 
a promo copy see the whole punch in the barcode there um, their songs translate well acoustically obviously some of them that I mentioned Jar of Flies and Sap obviously were written or recorded that way so it made sense um, but I think this is the last thing they ever did with um, Lane Staley before his untimely death I think he was 27 um, when he passed away of heroin overdose ironically enough um, Kurt Cobain was 27 uh, you, can, you can do a search on YouTube about a lot of rock stars that hit 27 and for whatever reason um, passed away um, but yeah there's some good versions of some songs on here I really liked um, other than the acoustic ones I mentioned, Angry Chair really sounded good acoustically, so did Brewster. Um, and what was the other song? I think Down in a Hole, obviously. Um, very depressing song, but um, great nonetheless. Um, so yeah, that was the last output of the Lane Staley era. Um, next up we have, let's see, what's this one? This one's Black Gives Way to Blue. Um, this came out in 2009, so after Lane Staley's death, um, they really weren't sure, I don't think, if they were going to go on or not. Um, and they went out back and got um, William Duvall as a vocalist. Um, he actually sounds very similar to um, Lane Staley, in my opinion. Um, so this was their first album with him. Not a huge, huge fan of this album. Um, that's the new dude right there. Some lyrics in here. Um, but this had um, Check My Brain on it, I believe, which I thought was a great song. Your Decision, a good song. Um, Acid Bubble. It just didn't feel like the same Alice in Chains. Uh, obviously, whenever a singer changes like that, it's, it's hard to recover. Um, but so this is Black Gives Way to Blue. Um, I do like a few songs on here, as I mentioned. Um, but it's just not the same, even though I think Jerry Cantrell's still writing um, most of their uh, material. He did put out a solo album, I think, before Alice in Chains decided to move on. I never got into that one. Um, let me know in the comments if, if it was any good. Um, the last CD I own from Alice in Chains is The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here, which came out in 2013. Um, all red here. Um, this album, I think, is a little better than um, <clears throat> Black Gives Way to Blue. Um, the inside, I'll show you here real quick. Uh, I don't know the significance of the, the Devil Put Dinosaurs Here title. I don't really... This is kind of a lot to look at, but... Um, there are some great songs on here. My my humble, very humble opinion. Um, what was it? Hollows on here. Pretty Done is a great song. But the song, I don't think they ever released it as a single, Breath on a Window. Um, one of my actually favorite Alice in Chains songs ever. Um, I, I would match that up with a lot of the earlier material. Um, it just has that creepy Alice in Chains vibe and then there's a solo and then the the ending of the song takes on a whole other direction very melodic and it kind of fades out um, just one of the greatest songs they've ever written I don't know why whatever record company they're on Capital um, the executives upstairs putting this out missed the mark with not putting out Breath on a Window um, out as a single could have really elevated this album, I think. Just my humble opinion, but um, I'll put a link below if I can find it. Maybe it was a single, and I, I don't listen to rock radio really, but um, at least it, back then, what came out 2013. Um, I'll put a link below if I can find it. You guys let me know what you think, but great fucking song. They did put out um, Rainier Fog <clears throat> in 2018. I gave a quick listen to it. And there were a couple songs I thought were pretty good, but the rest just kind of felt like they were phoning it in. So um, I haven't gone back to it, but if it's worth it, um, let me know. So thank you for checking out my uh, Alice in Chains CD collection. Uh, if you're a fan, you already know how great they were and still kind of are. Um, if you weren't a fan, hop on Dirt um, and listen to that from start to finish, and I think you will be... Um, hooked instant instantly heavy 
catchy, um, just all around from start to finish. Uh, just a great, uh, great, great album. Uh, and the other part about Dirt, I forgot to mention, I think um, there's songs on here like Junkhead, um, Sick Man, um, and some others, Angry Chair. They're all kind of, um, the theme is kind of around um, drug abuse as well. So you're starting out with um, how great heroin and, and drugs can make you feel and be and then eventually sick man is kind of about having withdrawals from from drugs like heroin um, and kind of you feel the the journey you go on from hey things are great um then bones you know hey i'm gonna end up being a pile of those bones someday if i keep doing heroin but it's so great i can't stop and you know you get to angry chair and sick man and you start to to feel the spiral and it, it comes through in the songs and the uh, the lyrics as well so thanks again for checking out the channel guys like subscribe all that fun stuff share it with your friends um and next up i will probably be doing i'm gonna hop back over to the vinyl over here um i've done quite a few cd updates so that's probably coming up next along with i keep talking about t-shirts i have a shit ton of t-shirts and I need to start talking about them, so I will do that um, soon also. So thanks for checking it out, guys. Catch y'all later.